welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a photo I took in a museum. First, I'm gonna address some of the low light using Brilliance AI as well as No Noise AI. And then we're gonna do something that you may not really consider on one or is erasing things in the background. And we're gonna get a little bit involved with getting some distractions out of the image. So hopefully you find some value in the content. If you do, smash the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I am using All One Photo Raw 2024. If you would like to pick up a copy of Photo Raw 2024, consider using my coupon code, FreeWillPhotos20. You'll save a little bit of money at checkout and I make a small commission and no extra cost to you. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at this image. So here we are in the computer and this file, I'll go over to the info quickly. This file you can see was shot at 3200 ISO. Now, that's not a big deal because if you look at the photo as is, you probably can't see any of the noise. Uh, and just for a quick tip, digital noise lives in the darker areas of the photo in most cases, all right? So I'm gonna zoom in. At least I thought I was gonna zoom in. There we go. You can see that there is a little bit of grain and texture in there, but 3200, and I was using the Canon EOS R6, which is a 20 megapixel camera. I'm not gonna get into the science of why that renders relatively less noise than a higher megapixel camera, but just know that lower megapixel cameras have an advantage in low light most of the time, depending on how that sensor is built. Again, not gonna get into the science of all that, just know that that could be the case. And in this case, it did render a really good result in low light because I was hand holding and I shot this at one, one 25th of a second um, and the lens that I was using has image stabilization so it kind of just works out. Here's the point of this entire video. How well does Brilliance AI actually work? Let's go ahead and activate it. So, Here's what Brilliance AI did to the image. And I have my preferences set, just so everyone's aware. My Brilliance AI preference is set for no noise AI to turn on after a photo is 1600 and above. So if I come over to noise and sharpening, you can see that Brilliance AI, I'm sorry, no noise AI has been turned on and it's only turned on to 50 percent now in this case i think that it did a pretty decent job but let's go ahead and just turn this off and you could barely see any difference so let me just zoom in a little bit more and then we'll go no noise ai it's going to process and it almost makes the file a little bit worse. I actually like it without the noise reduction. But for the sake of, you know, just using Bro and say I will keep it on high detail uh, because that rendering model may work out for us. And we'll increase the luminance. And you can see it starts to add artifacts. So this is one of the things that people like to tell me about no noise AI and how it impacts their image. I always tell them, don't use no noise AI zoomed in. Instead, look at it zoomed out. How does your file look when you're not zoomed in at 100% pixels or whatever? Because that's always going to look weird. I'm a firm believer, and I know that and this isn't from on one, but just in my experience of using noise, reduction software, I'm a firm believer that they are designed to fix the image as the viewer would view it. We don't view our images at 100%. So every time that we're told you got to zoom in to use noise reduction software, 
I always say, well, that's weird because I'm not looking at the image at 100%. That may not be technically correct. I'm more creative. I just understand that when I apply noise reduction software, I like to be zoomed out because this is how I'm going to look at the image anyway. And that's my recommendation to everyone who watches my content. But you also get to test this out for yourself. Now, I'm more than welcome to discuss this. So if you got comments on if you should be zoomed in to 100% or not, leave it in the comment section below and we could discuss it. But every time that I zoom in, I seem to always be like, oh man, this doesn't look good. And so then I make corrections to my noise reduction. And when I zoom out, I'm like, well, that didn't do anything. So it just doesn't make sense to me. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. Let's continue moving on. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this noise reduction because I like what it did. And then I can go ahead and lower or close out, I should say, my noise and sharpening. And for this image, it really just needs a very, very simple edit. So simple that it's just a crop because I don't like this bottom section of the table in the image. So I'm just gonna pull up on that. And then I'll rotate this other direction. I'll pull this over because I don't wanna cut off. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna go with a free form on this and make my own crop and I'll rotate it after I get the items that I care to have in the image into the image. So we'll do something like that. And here's the challenge that I'm always faced with rotating my images. If you look in the back of the image, this crossbar on the stand is kind of, well, it, not kind of, it is slanted. However, the table of the items that I am photographing they look great, or it looks great. And this is where I would use generative fill because I don't want any of this stuff in the background, or at least I don't think it adds to the photo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the check mark, and that will be my image. And then I would send this in to Photoshop and really just get rid of that background because, or those distractions in the background. Now, we could try to use the magic eraser here inside of on one. Um, I'm not sure how well it'll work. So let's give it a shot. Okay, that worked pretty decent. And then we'll come down here and we'll try getting rid of this stuff. And I'll zoom in when I want to get closer to the bowl uh, or the artifact here. Um, yeah, okay. So Magic Eraser is working pretty decent for what I'm trying to do here. And I'll just get rid of that. And I can clean that up here in a little bit. But I'll fast forward through this whole cleaning process. And if you got questions about what I did, then just leave it in the comment section. Um, and if there's enough questions, then I will make a dedicated video about how I clean up my images. But for this, I'm just going to speed through. Okay, so I did the cleanup as best I could. Let me show you how that all worked out. One of the quick tips that I'll share with you is if you hit the little arrow, you can see your in your layers panel, you can see your retouching. So I can turn off the retouching and you can see what was in the background and then I can turn on the retouching and you can see everything that I got rid of. Now it's not perfect and more so it's not perfect on the right side of the image. So let me just go ahead and come back into this. So we'll zoom in. Oh, there we go. And we're going to work on this area right in here. So. This piece right here probably needs to be cleaned up because that's not what the wall looks like. And then same thing over here, 
We're losing texture in the wall, and I believe that there's some easy ways of fixing this inside of On One that you know could be overlooked. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go back to our retouch. I'm gonna use the actual healing brush here, but the mode that I'm gonna use is stamp. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to that area, navigate over to it, and I'm going to use a feather that is not 100%, I'll go about 86. And that just helps with painting the target area a little bit more, but it still provides a level of feathering. And I'm just gonna paint that whole area. And now I can click and drag this green box to go and select a different area. Let me zoom out so that way I can move this appropriately. And we'll select an area about here. And so this is a little bit darker and there's ways that we can correct that. But the idea is to bring back the texture. So now that that's done, we'll come over here to this little piece and let's see if we can do something similar. This time I'm gonna make my feather 100% because I want that to be a little bit more uh, faded out so it doesn't go into this artifact, all right? So we'll click there and then I'm just gonna grab some information probably right about here because I think that that will look decently well. Um, and maybe we'll paint over this little area as well. And we'll put this about there. So now we're getting more of that texture in the entire image. Let's go Command Zero. It does look a little modified and corrected. So this is where I think local adjustments come in handy because they allow us to make the updates that we may need to make. So I'm gonna come over to our local adjustments tab, hit add adjustment, and this time, I need to brighten up the area and I'll go pretty decent here. And I'm just going to paint in here. And you can see how that's starting to blend this naturally with the area. And now it doesn't look so much like I actually modified this particular image. Uh, I will note, I didn't paint at 100% opacity. I only painted at 48%. And then I just built this up so that is something you want to pay attention to as you start to do this in your own images. So here's a quick tip. If you want to take a look at the before and after for the retouching, over here in your layers panel, it may be collapsed at the time that you're going over there. There's gonna be this little arrow to the far right. If you click that and drop that panel down, you'll see that you have retouching and then I also have develop and this is where all of my adjustments are living right now. Well, I can turn off the retouching and then you can see everything that was a distraction in the background. You can see all of that back there and then you can see when I touch this, how it goes away. So this is a really cool thing. It wasn't available in previous versions of On One. And whenever I use the retouching tool and I need to kind of go back and say, okay, where did I come from and where am I going? This is the way that I do that. Uh, same thing with the local adjustment. If I turn this off and turn it on, I can see that I actually modified the light over in this far right side of the image. So everything looks more natural. Now, what I'm realizing now, I should have come a little bit uh, further down here and just got rid of this area, uh, but I won't do that for the sake of tutorial purposes. Just know that that is something you wanna look into. Uh, my goal is not to be perfect. My goal is to be realistic and uh, personable um, or relatable, that's the word. And sometimes that's just the way it goes. So next time as you start to edit your images, just make sure you're looking for those little things. And hopefully that made sense. So. That is a very straightforward and simple edit that I have just did inside of On One. I didn't have to go to Photoshop as I originally thought I was going to have to do. And, you know, that's kind of the fun of just experimenting with what the tools can do and knowing what is available to you inside of On One. 
if you got questions about how to use these particular uh, erasing tools or retouching tools, please let me know. They can be a little bit complicated, but I promise you they're fully cap you're fully capable of understanding them if you just take the time to use them and experiment. So all your questions, put them down in the comment section. If you want to save some money on on one, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 when you check out. You'll save a little bit of money. I get a small commission. It's a win-win, but it's at no extra cost to you. So until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.